Hey garden family, welcome back to Soil and Crop Central. Ever feel like your soil just isn't pulling its weight, too dry, too compact, or just not feeding your plants the way it should? What if the secret to healthier, more productive soil was something ancient, natural, and easy enough to make in your own backyard? Enter Biochar, a soil supercharger that holds water like a sponge, stores nutrients like a bank, and can transform even tired garden beds into thriving ecosystems. Let's explore how it works, how you can make it, and how to put it to use in your garden today. Biochar is a charcoal-like material made by heating organic matter, like wood chips, crop residue, or even yard waste, in a low-oxygen environment, a process known as pyrolysis. Unlike ash or burnt waste, biochar is carbon-rich and highly porous. These pores aren't just holes. They're miniature hubs that hold water, store nutrients, and provide habitat for beneficial soil microbes. What makes biochar especially exciting is its history. Indigenous Amazonian farmers used biochar over a thousand years ago to create terra preta, or dark earth, some of the most fertile soil ever recorded. That same principle still applies today. When added to soil, biochar helps improve structure, reduce nutrient loss, and support long-term soil health. Unlike compost, which breaks down over time, biochar stays stable in the soil for centuries. It's a one-time effort that pays off for the long haul. If you're after bigger harvests, fewer watering sessions, and better soil structure, biochar might be your new best friend. Here's why it works so well in the garden. One of the standout features of biochar is its ability to hold water. Its porous surface acts like a sponge, absorbing moisture during rains or watering, and then slowly releasing it as the soil dries. This not only helps during drought conditions but also reduces the frequency of watering, especially helpful in raised beds and container gardening. This feature is especially beneficial for gardeners in arid or unpredictable climates. Even in well-irrigated systems, biochar can reduce water stress, giving your plants a buffer against dry spells. Whether you're dealing with heavy clay or loose sand, biochar improves the physical structure of soil. In clay soils, it increases aeration and prevents compaction, making it easier for roots to grow. In sandy soils, it helps retain water and nutrients that would otherwise wash away. The physical presence of biochar in your soil adds lightweight, stable organic matter that doesn't decompose. Over time, this results in fluffier, more workable soil that's better at supporting plant growth. Here's where biochar really pulls its weight. It doesn't just sit in the soil, it interacts with it. The massive surface area of biochar, just a teaspoon of fine biochar, can have the surface area of a football field binds to nutrients like nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium holding them in the root zone rather than letting them leach away. This means that your fertilizers and composts become more effective. Rather than washing out with the next rain, those nutrients stick around, right where your plants need them. As a bonus, biochar also supports microbial activity, which helps make nutrients more available to plants. Buying pre-made biochar can be expensive, but the good news is, you can make it yourself. It's a simple, rustic process that turns your garden waste into gardening gold. The easiest way to make biochar is using a metal drum or old barrel with a lid. Fill the drum with dry, untreated biomass, branches, wood chips, corn stalks, or any other carbon-rich organic material. Avoid anything painted, treated, or oily. Light a fire underneath or inside the drum and allow it to smolder, not blaze. You're aiming for a low oxygen burn, so once the material starts to carbonize, reduce the airflow and keep the burn slow and steady. This is pyrolysis and it's what transforms wood into biochar rather than ash. After a couple of hours, when most of the material has turned black and light, quench the fire with water. Be careful, this can create a lot of steam. Let the char cool completely before handling. Fire safety is key here. Always burn in an open, well-ventilated space away from structures, trees, or anything flammable. Keep a hose or fire extinguisher nearby, and wear gloves and a mask to avoid inhaling smoke or ash. Don't attempt this indoors or on windy days. A little caution goes a long way in keeping things safe and controlled. 
Not all biochar is created equal. For the best results, keep your fire temperature consistent, ideally between 400 degrees Celsius and 700 degrees Celsius or 750 degrees Fahrenheit and 1300 degrees Fahrenheit, and avoid burning green or wet wood. The drier the material, the cleaner the burn. Try to keep pieces small and uniform for more complete carbonization and better future performance in the soil. Once you've made your batch, crush the char into small pieces. The finer, the better. Smaller particles have more surface area and are easier to mix evenly into soil. Now that you've got your biochar, it's time to charge it and put it to work. Fresh biochar is empty. It will absorb nutrients, but that can backfire if you put it in the soil straight away. It'll draw nitrogen and minerals out of the soil, competing with your plants. To prevent that, we charge it. Mix your biochar with compost, worm castings, compost tea, or aged manure. And let it soak up nutrients for at least a few days, up to two weeks for best results. Some gardeners also soak biochar in a liquid fertilizer, like fish emulsion or seaweed extract. Once charged, it's ready to become part of your soil ecosystem. Dig it directly into your garden beds or planting rows. Aim for 5 to 10% of total soil volume. That's roughly one part biochar to 10 parts soil or compost. Blend it well so it's evenly distributed at root level. If you're starting new beds, you can mix biochar with compost and topsoil during the initial setup. For raised beds or no-dig systems, you can simply add it as a layer and gently rake it in. Short on time or don't want to disturb your soil? Use biochar as a top dressing. Spread a quarter to half inch layer around established plants or over mulch. Rain and irrigation will slowly wash the nutrients into the soil. Earthworms will also help incorporate it over time. This method is especially useful for perennials, fruit trees, or any space where digging is disruptive. Container plants can dry out quickly and often lose nutrients with every watering. Mixing 10% biochar into your potting mix helps retain water and nutrients, making containers more forgiving and productive. Just be sure to charge the biochar beforehand. Potted plants don't have extra soil volume to buffer any nutrient competition. Biochar isn't a miracle product, it's better than that. It's a tool, a powerful, natural soil enhancer that supports water retention, nutrient efficiency, soil structure, and microbial life. Once it's in your garden, it stays there, quietly working year after year. It's sustainable, low cost, especially if you make it yourself, and fits beautifully into an organic or regenerative gardening approach. If you've been looking for a long-term way to improve your soil without constantly reapplying fertilizers or battling dry beds, biochar could be the answer. It's not complicated, and once you try it, you'll wonder how you ever gardened without it. Thanks for growing with us here at Soil and Crops Central. If this guide helped you out, do us and your fellow gardeners a favor like, share, and hit that subscribe button. We've got more soil smart techniques and hands in the dirt tutorials coming your way every week. Drop your questions in the comments and let us know if you'd like to see a step-by-step -step DIY biochar demo in our next video.